Hello everybody and welcome back to Blue Rose Minis. Today's video is going to be another base making tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make these beautiful beach bases. So starting off, we are going to need to gather up some materials. The materials that you will need to gather up are going to be an exacto knife and scissors, a piece of foam or styrofoam if you want to make a rocky shoreline. You are going to be needing Armageddon dust. McCrag blue and Beharoth blue. We are gonna be make we are gonna be making a mixture between these two for our water. And of course you're gonna be needing a super glue if you want to make a rocky shoreline. So first of all you're gonna go ahead and take your foam, cut it to the size that you roughly need. And here I'm using a 40 millimeter base, but this should work on any other base size that you want to have this look on. Now, if you're using super glue, you are going to want to be very generous with the amount that you put on just to ensure that the styrofoam or foam sticks properly and stays stuck. And then I'm going to just be grabbing my scissors. I'm flipping it over. I'm just going to cut the foam to where it fits around the base. Just cut, cut, cut until you are satisfied. Now. Right now our rock formation is a little too tall, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut it like an idiot. See, I see that my foam is starting to come off, so now I'm gonna be grabbing my X-Acto knife. Trying to be very careful here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and slice this down. So I decided that the shoreline was a little too clean, too crisp for me, so I went ahead and added on more pieces of foam, which I then later shaped to give it a more realistic beach vibe, as the shore will not be a straight line. Now, if your foam starts to turn slightly green like mine is doing at the moment, do not worry, that's just a chemical reaction that the foam is having to the super glue. It will not in any way affect the product. You are in, not in danger of in any sort of way. Okay, so almost cut myself there because the exacto knife rolled off my working station. Which is why I emphasize extreme caution when using sharp objects. So once we're done with the shaping, we're going to be grabbing our texture tool. So using, using the larger side of my texture tool, I'm just going to go ahead and start applying it on to the base. So now just cleaning off my tool, I'm gonna go ahead and do the normal beach shoreline and I'll be back once the texture on both bases has dried. So coming back, I have both bases. The texture has fully dried on both of them. And on, we are going to make our mixture between McCrag Blue and Beharoth Blue. I'm just going to put two globs of McCrag Blue. I'm going to clean my brush before I grab some Beharoth Blue. And I am just going to be doing three globs. Now what I mean by globs is I just mean a glob. Just swip, swish your paintbrush in there and grab as much paint as possible. 
So now I am just swirling the colors together. I'm just gonna grab some of the paint on my brush getting the regular shoreline I'm just gonna do a perimeter perimeter run just to establish it fill it in and then I'm gonna gently dab some of the ocean color onto the sand to represent the tides so you're gonna end up with something like that Grabbing my rocky shoreline, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. Then I'm going to go ahead and dab any remainder onto the shoreline, as you see there. So the goal here is to kind of make it look like it's splashed up onto the little cliff side that we have there so you don't want to go too overboard with that so after setting that aside and letting it dry for another 10 minutes i would say we are gonna come back in with our elmer's glue and i'm gonna teach you guys a cool little trick that i recently discovered this is my first time trying trying it out so let's see how it goes so first you're gonna attempt to get glue out of the container guys please don't laugh at me as I struggle Okay, so giving up on getting any more glue out of that container for now, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a brush that I do not mind ruining. So I'm just taking this small base brush from Citadel. The tip is already pretty beat up, so I don't mind it getting any more roughened up. And I am just going to start spreading the current PVA glue that I have across the base washing off my brush and then I'm gonna go ahead and take an air gun to do the next step if you don't have an air gun in your position you can go ahead and grab a straw and blow through it but what you're gonna want to do and there as you can see it pushes the glue forward and makes a cool little wave effect now when doing this you do need to check back on it every so often because it will it will slowly gather up again wherever it landed and it won't look like waves anymore and if you're using elmer's all-purpose glue like i am this will dry clear so we are gonna add something else to it to make it look more wave-like so just transferring some of that extra glue from one base to another Bear in mind that the more glue you have, the longer it's going to take to dry, the more checkups you have to do. So again, taking my air gun, I'm just going to blast it, move it around. You want to have the air coming from a singular direction. It doesn't matter if it's in different angles, so long as it's, it's from the same direction. So after letting it dry for about an hour, you can see that it's not fully dry, but the pieces that aren't dry are still hard enough for us to paint on so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step but as you can see it gives it a really nice glossy shiny coat to make it appear as water not only that but it protects the paint underneath so you don't have to worry about scraping or anything so for this next and final part of this tutorial we are going to be taking our palette again and white scar and I'm going to water it down slightly. I don't want to water it down too much to where it's transparent because I do want to have a rowdy ocean. So I want it to be clashing against the rock face and just creating really nice powerful waves. So getting some of the color on my paintbrush, I am just going to go ahead and 
dab the color on, pushing forward, never back. Now I'm just gonna start at the shoreline and following the dried PVA line. You should be able to see it quite clearly when you are doing this. Just look for a shiny reflective edge and go all the way across that. Now going underneath it, I'm gonna start making just reckless waves all pointed in the same direction as well. And the further away from the shore that I go, the, the less powerful the waves become. So they're gonna end up becoming these small little waves that will later crash into the shore with a good amount of power. So with that, the normal shoreline is looking good. You're just gonna repeat the same thing if you have a couple rocky shorelines like I do here, except you're gonna wanna be a bit more aggressive with the rocky shoreline. Just imagine, or if you happen to live near an ocean, observe the waves for a while, see how they crash against a cliffside. But other than that, I do thank you for joining me today on Blue Rose Minis. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you guys didn't catch my last video, I am giving away six mystery Space Marine Hero miniatures. If you want in on this giveaway, just go ahead and comment down below on this video as well as the previous video stating that you want in and I'll go ahead and put your name in a random generator. And if you guys get picked, I'll go ahead and contact you. I will of course be filming all of this. And I just want to take this opportunity to restate the fact that I do have a Discord as well. It is a more effective way in contacting me. So if you guys have any ideas that you guys would like me to do, anything you want me to show or explain you, any how-tos, you can go ahead and contact me on my Discord server. And I hope to see you guys there. Have a great day.